Hey guys, this is Mike Tarallo with Click, and this is a longer feature demonstration video for the Click Data Analytics release, February 2021. This is a companion video to go along with the What's New summary. And we're going to start out with the new data catalog capability available in ClickSense SaaS editions. So as we've mentioned, providing a data first experience really starts out within the hub and in the hub, I'm on my home page, and you can see I have a section where I can immediately drop some data files that I'd like to upload and use within my apps. I can also view all of the data that has been uploaded and view properties and make some changes and edits. And we're gonna do that in a minute. But we also have the ability to add, in this case, data directly from the toolbar from the menu. In this case, this initial release supports the supported data files. So I'm gonna click on data file and then browse my local machine. And just for simplicity purposes, I'm gonna choose an Excel file that I have here. And I could choose the space where I would like this data to reside. And I could also add additional files if I wanted to. Now I'm gonna click Upload. And that file has now been added and it could be seen in the section on the home page marked as your data. Now if I wanted to explore this and then move to a particular space, you can then see that data set also within that space and then also look at additional details, select the data sources, and here you have actions to duplicate, move, and delete as well. But let's go back to the home page and directly from the Your Data section here, I'm going to click on Edit and this give this a, a more friendly name. So we'll just call this Video Game Sales. I could put tags in here for easy identification and uh, searching purposes and provide a more detailed description. Now, if I go into the actual data set, I could actually see additional properties and attributes such as modified date, create date, the owner, the space, the size, the actual real name, the creator, etc., as well as the tags. But there's also a section here for uh, future use, in this case, adding properties. So at this point, these are just informational, but I could add properties regarding uh, GDPR, HIPAA, uh, payment and card industry. I could provide a subject area where I could actually enter text in here. And such as if this was sensitive data, for example, I could flag that as yes. Now we're not gonna do anything with it at this time, but eventually this could then have actions taken on these properties, for example, such as masking the data within an app. Other things I can do, I can click profile and I can look at various uh, metadata and statistics of the particular data set, such as the column names, their data types, distinct values, null values, sample values, etc. I can choose uh, the columns to view, and then also I could jump right in and switch this to a sample data view as well. And then finally, if I want to use this data, I can click create app from data. I can give the app a name and then click create. And then in the space that I choose, my app will be ready for me to start creating visualizations and analysis. We have also made some user experience improvements to the landing page of the ClickSense Hub. So in this case, while I'm at the home page, I can view all the assets that are meaningful to me, and I could also adjust their importance of how I'd like to view them, as well as make changes to what is actually seen. In this case here, for example, if I want my apps to be front and center on the top, I can just grab the handle and move it above training. I can click customize your home, and perhaps I do not want the training resources on my home page, so I could uncheck that. I can go to generated content and maybe I'd like to see my data assets and any charts that I'm monitoring front and center. And then if I had any additional collections such as my favorites, I can add that as well. I click done and now I have a customizable home page that has all my important information front and center. Next, I'm just going to cover a little bit on consolidated SAP connectivity. Basically, this is our new SAP BW connector that merges the info providers and BEX connectors, delivering further value to end-to-end -end SAP solutions. The connection is defined using regular SAP connectivity parameters, such as host, client ID, system number, and username and password, including potential adjustments to the default values for connection string parameters, 
And then when connected, there are filter options in the definition to basically select the type of data, such as load texts and load attributes, and to show friendly names. There is also a dropdown for provider types, listing info providers available and options to select available BEX queries. When accessing the data, you also have the ability to filter data on user provide conditions and select desired columns and much more. So just a quick example of showing you what the new SAP BW connector can do. Okay, next I'm gonna go through some augmented analytics enhancements in Inside Advisor. So to Inside Advisor search, we added natural language generation where within the visual charts generated by Inside Advisor, you have the option to view narrative insights and interpretations of the data. So if I type in sales by product name, you'll notice that we receive a bar chart showing me sales by product, but we also have the ability to look at narrative insights, basically giving you additional information in the form of text, such as the top product name by sales and the percentage of sales from the top 29 products. Some other improvements with Inside Advisor come to you in Inside Advisor chat. So in this example here, let's say I'm just gonna choose a particular app and we're interested in querying sales. So I ask my question about sales. Not only will it show me the summary of sales, but it'll also provide me with additional suggestions and options to help prompt further analysis and insights. Okay, after all that great stuff I just showed you, something I'm personally excited about is the ability to reuse master measures as expressions in new master measures. So to give you an example here, I have some pricing data and I have some conditions attached and even a date range. So let's create a new master measure and we'll just call this one today's price loose. And we'll go into the expression and here, I'll paste an expression that gives me the sum of all the loose prices where the condition is loose and it's for today's date. So a little calculated expression that has uh, some set analysis in it. And we can see that it evaluates appropriately. We'll click apply and click create. So let's grab that and drop that in. So that's one set of pricing information. So let's create a new one. Or in this case here, actually, we can just duplicate this one and then edit it. And this is gonna be called price CIB. It stands for complete in box. And we're gonna change the parameters here now to reflect CIB. And now we're summing CIB price for today, as well as the condition is CIB. And we have our today's date for set analysis. Click apply. So two separate expressions now we have, and we can grab that pricing. Now I wanna combine these to get a total collection value. So I'm gonna create a new one and we're gonna call this one total collection value. And now when I go into the expression, I can just reference those particular measures. And you can see they pop up right up in the autocomplete. So that's going to be today price CIB plus today price loose. So these are the actual names of the master measures we just created a moment ago. I click apply, let's change our formatting to money, click create, and now I can grab my total collection value and you can see it is a combination of these two master measures. How cool is that? So this new feature definitely adds a extra layer of governance and increases productivity. Now a nice little feature we added also is the ability to control visibility of sheets based off of a condition. So quickly, if I'm on the sheet properties, you can see in this split screen approach, we have the app overview, which shows this sheet on the left. And there's a show condition property here that if this evaluates the true, which by default is shown, um, it will show the sheet within the app overview. However, if we can change it to a zero, which will hide the sheet. In other words, if we had an expression that evaluated to uh, true or false, in this example, I'm using one or zero, the sheet is then hidden. So keep in mind, the main purpose of this is for managing app content. Uh, you're controlling sheet visibility. It's a great way to basically uh, control uh, app content towards different groups of users. Uh, it is not intended as a security function. So please continue to use section access for that instead. 
So also in this release, we added a new visualization. It's available in the Click Visualization Bundle. And in that bundle, we have what's called a grid chart. Now, a grid chart is good for looking at uh, a particular measure across two dimensions. It's very similar to a scatter plot, uh, but instead of correlating um, two measures by a dimension, what you're doing is you're looking at two different dimensions, and then you could plot the size of the dot, for example, can be a measure, and the color of the dot could also be a measure with a appropriate gradient. Let me give you a brief example. So in this case here, once uh, again, I'm using uh, video game pricing and collection data. So here we're gonna add a measure of the collection value, and then we're going to add a dimension. In this case now, our dimension is gonna be the load date, the actual dates that these were entered or acquired. And then the next dimension is going to be the platform. In other words, the different uh, genres of the games. And by looking at this grid chart, we can see that the collection started on December 13th, uh, 2017. And you can see all the different platforms. And then each dot represents uh, a uh, collection value. So this is when, for example, different uh, game titles or system titles were entered and verified. The ones that are blank um, are information that's in the data, but they were not acquired or entered on that time just yet. Now, a nice little thing about this is you can see as we drag across the timeline, you can start to see more dots that are now entering the picture. Uh, and that's indications of when these particular items were added to the collection. And then you can also see the dot sizes are starting to increase on some of these, for example, for the uh, Atari 2600 in particular, uh, as well as the uh, Nintendo Entertainment System here. So as I drag over more to the right, you can see those dots are also starting to increase in size. So what that means is the uh, individual collection values for those particular titles on those dates have also increased, whether that was organic, meaning added to the collection simply through purchases or through the growth of the market. So this is a great way to visualize this type of uh, measure information um, by two dimensions. And now another component we added to ClickSense is a video player, which can be found in the Click Dashboard Bundle. Now the video player allows you to embed videos directly in a sheet in a ClickSense app. Now the URL can be added directly, currently supporting MP4 streams, WebM, and OGG formats. Uh, hopefully other formats will be coming soon, I am told. Uh, but the nice thing is, is the URL can also be an expression, so it can be dynamic. In this case here, just to show you what I did, I created a variable, and in this variable, I just called it vVideo, and I gave it a uh, default MP4 file name. And then I have a URL that I'm just gonna put in the expression with that vVideo variable. So in the expression editor, I'm just gonna paste in the video URL, and that just goes to our S3 bucket on Amazon AWS. And you can see we have the vVideo variable. You can see it is resolving to week4tweet.mp4. So we click apply and it places that video directly in this frame here. And now I have a Dropbox that basically changes that variable to a couple of videos that I created. So here's a uh, promo just for Amazon gift card and then so forth. And then we have a highlights introduction, etc. And then our week four promo that I created this week. Hey guys, I'm Mike Rollo with Quick. Okay, so another cool little component and example added to ClickSense to help you embed videos directly into Sheets in ClickSense apps. We have also added a new reload action to our button component. And to simply demonstrate that, I'm just gonna go into this app, go over to my chart objects and grab button. And for this button label, we're just gonna call it reload. And then under actions and navigation, we're gonna add an action and select reload data. Now to simulate a uh, update in transactional data, I just have a sample PHP MySQL inventory app, and I'm going to import some new data into the transactional system. So let's just say we just got a bunch of games delivered to the store, and we're gonna import those into our transactional system. So we've imported 188 records into the transactional system. 
and now going back to the app in the analysis mode, I just click reload and we're going to see the number of games reflect those 188 records. And there you go, 638 games. So having a nice reload action tied to a button allows you to perform fast reloads without having to go into the edit mode and it allows users to be able to reload data on demand. Well, that's it for this video. If you want a deeper dive on these highlights and more with each release, be sure to sign up and subscribe for our Click Insider webinar series, with the next one scheduled on February 24th. If you want to be notified when more videos such as this are posted and are viewing from YouTube, click the bell icon below. We want to hear from you, so tell us in the comments below what you think. And don't forget to check out these other great resources to learn more about Click and ClickSense. And please remember to join the conversation with myself and others in the Click community. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Take care.